Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to be going through some common mistakes you want to avoid, especially in the early game with your progression. But before we get into that, I have to give you guys a massive thank you because we did just manage to hit 5,000 subscribers on the channel, which means we're going to do a giveaway in this video. So we're going to do a $100 giveaway. All you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment and you'll go into the draw. And then I'll announce the winner about a week away uh, in a community post. We already have another one ongoing as well, which is the tier list video, which is a few days away from being drawn out. So we will do another one at 10,000, but I really do appreciate the support with this awesome new game. So let's go through the tips. So the first one that I want to go through is involving your AFK stages. So the thing I noticed, and, and this is mainly for people who play other idle games and stuff, probably new players to the genre as well. With most idle games, this, this AFK stage thing is like the core gameplay. So it's always looking you in the face. However, with AFK Journey, because we have such a big map to explore, we have story to do, it's just got that whole extra level. I often, especially in my early playthroughs, found myself going like 12 hours a day without even looking at the AFK stages. Do not neglect these stages. Check these back frequently. You will constantly get resources in the world and level up. And as you level up, you will be able to push extra AFK stages. So the first one is just be aware of the AFK stages and don't neglect these. Now this eases it up once you get later on because it's not as impactful, but especially in the early days of this game, you want to be pushing this and be stuck all the time. Obviously this is for more min maxi type reasons. If you're a more casual, uh, not if you don't care about it, don't stress. If you just play to have fun that's cool but i guess this video is more for those people who are trying to min max a bit more so moving on to my next thing and that is using dream realm attacks at the start of the day even i fall for this like i fell for it myself you can see here i've used two attacks what i always recommend doing with the with the um the dream realm is doing one attack at the start of the day because you need to attack register an attack to get into the leaderboards to get your rewards the next day so do one attack at the start of the day 100 percent but then and once again all these things ease up as you get later on because the scaling is different but i save the rest of my attacks for the end of the day you can see here i've done two because i wanted to test the strategy but what i ideally want to do is save all those attacks for the end of the day because that is when you will level your heroes the furthest and you will have the best capabilities of actually defeating those bosses or doing as much damage as possible and if you need to test strategies you'd rather be doing it with your heroes at level 60 instead of level 50 let's say so that is why i definitely recommend you do one at the very start of the day just so you've locked it in in case life happens but besides that save the rest of the attacks for the end of the day so you can try and push as far as you can Moving on from that, this one is also a little bit min maxi uh, and it ties into all the other things, and that is collecting your AFK loot at the start of the day. Once again, I only collect my AFK loot when I am hard stuck and there's nothing else I can do, and that loot will give me the progression I need, whether it be levels. Early on, experience is a bottleneck. Later on, the hero essence is a bottleneck. So I only use these when I feel like I need to, or if the day's about to end and I've got my furthest progression. Once again, because that is based on your AFK loot and that is what you want to optimize. You want to be getting as much as possible from it, even right, even early on when it may not seem like much, because maybe early on you don't need hero essence, later you will. So it does make a difference if you want to min max that. And to the same extent, this one's a bit more sweaty, but I still do this. I don't collect my daily, uh, my daily quests until the end of the day you can see i've got at the moment i've got about 12 hours left till the end of the day i ain't collecting these until the end of the day because this is based on your afk loot and i want to maximize as much of this hero essence as possible because like i said it becomes a massive bottleneck and absolutely min maxing every bit i can uh, is going to be an awesome one for me next one next mistake you want to avoid is not making a decent wish list now there is a bunch of different ways you can set up a wish list i made a whole video going over this so i'm not going to go through the entire wish list because that's a whole video in itself i'll leave that video linked in the description if i remember if not just search best wish list you'll find it and uh yeah i go through a whole discussion on wish list now there are some differing opinions on different things definitely but just don't leave it as the default wish list because that is probably the biggest mistake you can make is you can get in a bunch of heroes that you don't 
really have a use for. Just make sure you know what you're putting on your wish list and why, uh, and you're happy with those decisions so you can actually get yourself some characters that you will be happy with at the end of the day. Like I said, there is some variance, but there are some you definitely want to avoid, but th that's my wish list just for a general look. There are some characters you want to get one copy of and stuff like that before you take them off the wish list. There's a bunch of nuance to this. I recommend you go watch the video, but definitely don't just leave the default wish list, please. That's just an absolute killer. Now, the next mistake is power leveling heroes. Now, bear with me on this one because AFK Arena, you always power level a hero. But I'm sure some people have already noticed that a lot of the things in this game, uh, I'll see if I can find one here with where I'm up to. And I might be able to show you, but a lot of the, the, the break points that you need to get to have to do with your resonance level, which means you need five characters at a specific level. And if you're power leveling one character, you might miss those marks. For instance, here it says I need to be resonance level 60. Now, if I went ahead and instead of getting all these guys up to 60, because they were uh, they, they were all at 55, if I went and I just got to see straight to 105, uh, sorry, not 105. If I got her straight to 65 and then say Rowan straight to 65 as well, because I have the dust to do so, then I would be taking longer to get there. My recommendation with leveling your heroes is go in five level increments. So I'll get mine all to 60. Then I'll get Cecilia to 65. Then I'll get Thorin to 65. Then I'll get, uh, you know, maybe Lucius to 65 because we buy another tank. But I go in five level increments and I never get them more than that because all the limit breaks that you need to get to in the game are either it, like ending in a zero or a five. So you don't want to go beyond that with one character. Like I don't want to get my, like once I get all these guys to 60, I don't want to then go make Cecilia level 70 because it slows down my capacity to getting to those next limit breaks that we have over here, which is 60. The next one might be 65. It happens a lot in the game and it's so frustrating when you get crippled by it. Now that is more in the early stages because later on when the hero essence becomes the issue, uh, becomes your bottleneck, it's not an issue because by then you're swimming in hero, uh, hero experience so you can just like boom like you'll be stuck at all level 60 and then you go boom one of them to 70 you get the essence up boom the next one to 70 but in the early game going increments of five is what i'm trying to say there the next one is not power leveling heroes but power gifting heroes now one if you're not gifted if you don't know about this system make yourself aware of it uh, because this affinity system it's it's when you pick all the berries and stuff around the world you can give them to your characters and as you gift them you can see you can get some rewards now don't go power gifting your favorite character going i'll get them to 4500 because it gets me an extra summon if you want to do it to unlock the uh, the tail because that's your thing well that's your thing that ain't my thing so the way i do it is i just go to i go to 1300 don't go investing all of it into one uh what i've actually done here is i went to the characters that i don't use and i started gifting them all up to 100 and so i've got to sit down and spend some time doing this uh but i was trying to even it out early on so i've got a bunch of characters at 100 then after 100 because 100 is super cheap i'm going to aim straight for the 1300 level because 700 gives you 50 but down here you get an extra summon so then i'm just going to bulk them up to 1300 on the gifting keep in mind you can get gifts that they're favorable but they do take a while but early on in this stage it's just basically get them to 100 but don't just go dump all of your berries into one character because you won't get the same return as putting like like if you see here we put one berry it's 100 so literally if you just put one berry into every character at the start you get 50 gems for all of them and then you can start investing more and more and more as you go but like i said 1300 is that cap where you don't really want to push past until you got everyone else at that level then the next one i know i've made a whole video about this uh so you guys can go check that one out but skipping co-op battles and battles in general the co-op battles around the world can give you some really nice rewards and i just want to talk about co-op and cooperative type features in general in this one don't ignore the social features because the social features are great the these co-op battles uh, they give you some really good rewards. Later on, they even give you Hero Essence, which is fantastic. So you definitely want to do these. All you have to do is go there and share it with people and then someone will join. But don't, don't, and I know I know there are a lot of people that play these games as solo games, but you can definitely, for instance, on this server, I've just joined a random guild. I don't know anyone in it. Join a guild. Don't 
don't miss out on guilds because guilds have so many rewards the chests that you get the events that you get there's just so much to be had from guilds and just being in a guild unlocks the guild store so if you don't even join a guild uh you won't have access to this guild store which is where you can get your daily cheap summons and your monthly cheap epic summons so you definitely want to be in a guild if nothing else for this but also for the guild points that you can get because when you're in a guild also uh you unlock the um the missions sorry the quests the guild quests which which gets you more guild points so just be in a guild even if you hate it even if it's a pug even if you're not organized there will be com like more competitive type features with guilds but you don't have to compete in them you don't have to be competitive if you're in a casual guild so that is perfectly fine just get in one and don't ignore it because it's very important it does give you a good chunk of stuff so those are my main mistakes if i missed any if you guys have made any massive mistakes that you regret please let me know uh but i think that just about covers everything i wanted to go through in this one but as always guys don't forget leave a comment uh be subscribed you'll go into the draw for the giveaway but thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers